Yes, I'd like to welcome Rahul, Baja Rahul Bajaj onto the program. Walla Bansali, great to have you with us. Ram Deo Agarwal as well. I want to get snap reactions from all three of you, uh, Walla and Rahul, and then uh, you know some of the issues that we have confronted, which are causing us a certain amount of control. Walla Bhai, if I could just start with you, your take on the budget as of this moment. It's good to get out of electioneering, you know, Vikram. Uh, we had got used to all budgets being... Vallabhai, we suddenly okay. disappeared. Vallabhai seems to have suddenly disappeared. Rahul, uh, Rahul Bajaj, can I ask you that, that same question, your reaction as of this moment? Uh, I didn't get the question you asked, uh, Vallabhai, the reaction on what, uh, Vikram? The overall budget, uh, how, does it, how did it strike you? Overall budget, I've not heard what the others have said, and I've not had time to study it in detail, but uh, for the weaker sections, a lot of provision seems to have been made, and that's good, <laughs> that's welcome and to desire, you know, inclusive growth. But I, I, for industry and the corporate sector, it's all negative. And the only thing good I can say is it could have been worse. <laughs> we were expecting the 2% increase in uh, excise duty and service tax, hoping it will not come, but keeping in mind the need for fiscal deficit reduction and there was no other way they wanted to raise revenue. Uh, so uh, that is understandable, but I, I can't say it's acceptable. And what is it, 30,000 crore vik Vikram? I, last year's 40,000, nothing was done. That's why 13,000 is what happened. Okay. We know what happened to NGC. But there have been disinvestments okay, being done I, by I, the finance minister. Sorry, I just want to ask Rahul a question. For ages. Quickly. And 30,000 crores. Quickly. Why not 60, 70, 80,000 crores? And what political compulsion there? Maybe the right. TNC the will not any longer be much of a support anyway, and there'll be others coming in. So I think uh, they are closed unit, they are sick unit, they have land, they have other assets. They should have much. Okay. They should have been much more ambitious for disinvestment. Even the three lakh crore, which are in dispute with the tax department of individuals and corporate assessees. I mean, we have been saying it for long. If 20% of that they can settle out of court, but give you know, and take, you know, they'll Rahul, get 60,000 crores. So, okay, can I just? Rahul, I, think, I just want to get Vallabh Bhai in before the line goes again. I want to get Vallabh Bhai and Ramdev in on a, on an issue that we have just confronted. Vallabh Bhai, we've just seen indi the clear indications in the budget that they have retrospectively changed the laws to tax the Vodafone case. They've tried to plug it by retrospectively going all the way back to 1962. Uh, if that is indeed the case, and we can get you the further details if you haven't had a chance to see it yet, would that be something that would cause you a lot of concern? That's very clear. Page 19 of the explanatory memorandum, would, Rahul think, and Vallabh. Uh, it quite takes away a lot of the credibility factor that this budget uh, was creating in people's minds. And I would say it's, this is rather unfortunate because it's not only that it's against taxation jurisprudence, but it's also, you know, trying to undo what uh, the judiciary did. Yeah. Ramdeo, is, that, is this something that you think, it, I mean, is that the reason why the Sensex suddenly went from 50 points up ever since we started talking about this and saying this seems to be then the explanatory memorandum, Sensex is now 208 points down. There is a loss of confidence in Indians, India's credibility abroad. Could this worsen it? Ramdeo Agrawal. Yeah, one is, <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> not only loss of uh, confidence, but uh, uh, it brings a lot of uncertainty in the sense that... Uh, Whatever you have done in the past, is it over? I mean, is it done and uh, wrapped up? So I think it brings a lot of uncertainty. And, uh, uh, you know, the way taxation laws in India are not, you know, that clear. So uh, it brings a uh, whole lot of uncertainty in the foreign investment. And it is so important to get this foreign investment uh, at this juncture of 50, 60 billion dollars every year. So it's very unfortunate. Uh, that uh, this kind of, and I, I'm just wondering whether it, this also can be challenged in the court of law. Vallabhai, is that a reason why deal flow is starting to dry up to some extent? I mean, foreign investors, you interact with them all the time. Are they starting to say one of our problems in India is we don't know when they'll come up with a policy which will be changed. And now, even when a Supreme Court makes a ruling, they'll retrospectively change the law to yes, be able sir. to get around it. Yes, I think amongst many things, uh, you know, these are factors uh, indeed. The fact that we are not able to tackle our land issues, the fact we are not able to do mining policy, those are also additional, you know, very, very big factors. Uh, so whether it was the spectrum, whether it is, you know, the power projects that got stuck. So I think there is a lot of uncertainty. Rahul, I have a question to Rahul. Uh, 
here. Is Rahul there? Are you yeah, there? He's here. Yeah. Okay. So here's yes, the question, Rahul. Which Rahul? What, other than just sheer cussedness and taking panga, that the Supreme Court has, you know, gotten rid of the Vodafone case, which we took all the way up there, so we'll fix everybody and change the Income Tax Act retrospectively, which is there very clearly in page 19 of the explanatory memorandum, 19 and 20 and 21 of the, of the budget. What sense does it make to have retrospective amendment and ta do this taxation going back to 1961. There are at least three or four major deals which are going to get affected, deals that were concluded in the last three years. Is the question to me or to somebody else? To you, to you, Rahul. No, okay, I think I heard uh, the other speakers and Chanda speak about it and I feel the same way. I mean, whether such transactions should be taxed or not is a different matter. There can be two views on that. But there is no justification for doing it retrospectively, whether 2002 or 1962. I haven't studied the small print, which my friend Omkar has done. Uh, it's purely a revenue matter. They don't want to lose their revenue. They want to gain their revenue. And uh, I won't use the word uh, Omkar has used, cussedness, etc. But they are so such in bad, they are such in bad shape for fiscal deficit. Uh, they don't want to reduce subsidies. They say tomorrow we'll go to direct transfers, Aadhaar as and when it is ready. Uh, they can't increase uh, fuel prices. So this was one way which they thought only four or five companies will get involved, but they want foreign direct investment and then they do something like this. It's purely a wrong way of revenue raising measure. I can understand, and there'll be disagreements with me on that, that now onwards, you want to tax those things, what effect it will have on FDI and other matters can be seen. But that is understandable. That's the right of the government. I can understand some typo error or some technical error which can be corrected retrospectively. But to say that I meant this and this is this and even Supreme Court thing we want to correct retrospectively, to my mind, is very, very unfortunate to say the least.